Now I'm going to talk about the front end part of this push notification. First, you need to know basic knowledge about Promise and Fetch API is a modern ES6. Promise basically resolves the old school JavaScript callback hell. And Fetch API just based on Promise, it uses then, then, then. So for the web requirement, first we need to set up a very minimum setting on the manifest.json. The website need to serve over HTTPS because you need to register a service broker. But our local host is an exception. We need to set up our vapid key and user need to accept to receive notification. So to set up manifest basically just this file is quite simple to set up. And then service worker will use a gem called real service um it's called um service worker dash rails is done automatically and then next uh, I need to explain what service worker service worker by a uh, very fundamental talking about this is that it does mainly three things is caging background synchronization and push API which we will utilize a lot on the push API and then this is how the service worker lifecycle looks like so when the service worker started to install and then you activate once it activate, you go on idle. When a push message arrive, the idle will be activated again. And then we need to install service broker rails, mainly to do uh for this um once it installed into your Ruby on Rails app, it automatically do the basic caging strategy. Vapid key, as I explained in a previous video, we can make a uh, vapid key in this video and we save it to an environment. And then this is how it looks like for the user to receive a notification. So when uh, the JavaScript will trigger the show notification event, and then when the user press allow, is we'll save the talk the credential of the user into our server and into our database. Okay, just let's get to code. And this is in my new project. I'm using a Ruby mine. It's a um, product from the Jet brand. Okay, first, uh, just create a real new current directory. I don't mind using SQLite because this is a very simple app. On deployment, you can change it to Postgres. All right, this is the three of the gems that I need to install. Web push basically deal with the push API JSON, uh, just to set up the API. Dot env basically we want to access to the dot environment builds. Alright, first I'm gonna install germ install web push and then I need to install the wheels service worker wheels the service worker I'm sure the spelling's correct or not service worker that's reels service worker dash wheels and then we need to install uh, json because we are doing a lot on json last but not least we are using the dot environment uh, dash wheels once it is installed I'm gonna add all this dependency into my gem but Push gem service worker dash rails gem JSON. Then the last gem is for the dot env. Right, we've done the basic setup. Just gonna bundle install. Once it's done, we can start to do our front end. So just reels generate um service worker install. This will install the service worker with the service worker dash reels gem. So you create a few files, but 
what we gonna care really care about is two files that we're gonna use it's in the javascript first file is a manifest.json erb it set up our manifest.json it already done the basic setup and service worker js erb it already done a very basic caging and then the service worker companion just to register service worker all right we have done the setup and now we're gonna use uh we're gonna use the web push gem and we add it into our uh, we need a vapid key so in my irb or i'm using pry it's a better uh, coloring with irb so let me just require the web push gem so the web push need to generate the key and then I need to save the key into something to get it alright so this is a private key so you should never commit it I'm gonna change after this video so basically what is this is doing is that I would create a vapid public key and then I'll get the vapid public key I'm going to just copy it without the without the semicolon then I get a private key right with the private key I also save it you should never commit this as I said previously, they pit private key. So we'll save this file in our environment. Close it. And we are done setting up this project. Maybe we can do a bit on the view of the user. For this, just specifically for this project. So first, I'm going to generate a controller. So this controller, I call it a pages and it has an index function. So in this, it basically generates in the controller a pages with an index, with an index, and then with a view of index. So this index page is a very simple. I'm just gonna page one that stated as index page. Then I'm gonna create a button. So this button just a subscribe button. Not getting anything fancy. Just that I want to um, show that this function. So maybe I just add an ID of button for my future use because I'm gonna use a lot of JavaScript. So I can say this course is 70% on JavaScript, not much on Ruby on Rails, so that you can apply to any of your language of your uh, favor. You can test out this code in Rails surf, and then it's gonna surf on our local host 3000. Yep, our Rails is working. So one thing I forget to do is the router. So let me just go quickly go to the router. Then what it did is that I need to change the get to root. Then it gonna run the function. Alright, things done. Just quick refresh. Alright, it's done. So the subscribe button is done. Our basic UI is done.